every distribution has some package manager or another. Um, package managers are there to help you a lot. So if you try to install a version of a package that depends on some update to another package, uh, it'll take care of that for you. If you try to install something new, it'll install that and everything that was a dependency of the original package. Um, the package manager in Ubuntu is called apt. Um, it's actually a kind of a suite of packages. Uh, you have just come up here a little more. Can everybody see that? Um, so in uh, with Ubuntu, uh, apt get is from the command line your big package management command. Um, the first thing you want to do usually is run this app get update, which will um, retrieve a list of the updated packages that are available online. So not actually download the files, but just this package is available with this version and it depends on this. Um, and it'll kind of update your local database of what's available. Um, and then app get upgrade will upgrade every package that has some update available. You should do that fairly regularly, especially with Ubuntu. It's going to be pretty safe because um, you're not usually going to be updating package versions. You're just going to be getting security and bug fixes. Um, and then there's also apt get disk upgrade, I believe, which will remove packages that are no longer needed. So it might have been some dependency that was dropped in a new version of something else. So I think apt get disk upgrade tends to be a little bit nicer because it'll keep your system cleaner. Um, and then apt get remove, obviously it will remove a package. Um, if you want to search for a package, um, the command is actually apt cache, which will search your local database of what's available. Search, and then like let's say you're looking for the package grep, uh, that's how you would do it. Um, and then Ubuntu also has a really nice, um, I don't even know what they call it. It's a nice thing Yeah, they, they, have a whole, they have a whole GUI for doing this. Um, and like I said, the GUI's great, but if you're not kind of comfortable with the command line, you're not going to go anywhere. Out of curiosity, you said you were using Arch mm -hmm. and you were using the apps. Is apps generally something that only Ubuntu uses? Or no. It, it's really okay, so. There's a difference between the package manager and the package format. Mm -hmm. Ubuntu uses a thing called .deb mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because it's based off of another distribution called Debian. Um, and so apt and also another command D dpkg works with these devs, dev files. Um, Red Hat uses RPMs and the package manager I think is yum or yast or something like that. Um, yum. And then, uh, so OpenSUSE is another distribution, and YAST is the package manager, but it works with RPMs. Um, so Ubuntu, yeah, you're using apt because you're using um, .dev packages. I don't know if there's any other package managers that work with devs. No. Okay, yeah, so they, they all, they're, they're tightly ingrained. Um, and so basically what a package is, is the list of files that get copied onto your system when you install it, and then possibly some um, scripts that run after the package was installed. Like if a package depends on a user, it might need to add a user to your system, but there's no way to add a user to your system with a file. So sometimes actually commands need to be run. Or um, uh, a big one is icons. If you install icons, it'll put the icon files in place, but it'll need to run a command to update the icon cache, which is used so that you know when you have the GUI, you can look up icons efficiently. Um, what is next? Distribution. Yeah. No, before that. Um, any questions on packages or package management or anything like that? Yeah. Like the command that you just type in is to find the location of the, some specific app? It's to find the name. So, like uh, in the virtual box, I type in apt cache search grab and mm -hmm. then this space and then drop box, nothing happened. 
Um, does, does that mean that there is no Dropbox on the virtual machine? You search for Dropbox? Dro Dropbox. Yeah, uh, if you get no results, that's pretty typical. So there's some philosophies kind of in Unix systems, and one of them is that if there's nothing to report, then report nothing. Uh, so it doesn't mean there's no Dropbox. What it means is the name of the package is Dropbox. Uh, often package names are a little bit idiosyncrat, and they're like, I mean, Dropbox could be like DB and then some number or something. Oh, okay. um, but yeah, in general, if you get no results, it mean, I mean, if you, if you get, if, it, if you run the command and nothing happens, it means there's no results. So and I don't know. So I just ran it and got results. So you might need to do an update first. Okay. And you might need to run apt get update first and get a list, an updated list of what's available. Um, Does that matter if you type in uppercase or lowercase? Yeah. Oh, yes. Big thing. Unix. Everything is case sensitive. There, there's very little things that are case insensitive. Really, the only thing is like URLs for web pages happen to be. Oh, are they? Yeah, yeah. I think they're case insensitive. Um, so file names are case sensitive. I can have a file name file and a file name file, and they both can coexist. Uh, usernames uh, are case. You may not, yeah, I'll get to the same. Okay. I think your yeah, usernames are case sensitive. Everything's case sensitive, just like when you're programming. That said, real quick, while you can do this in Unix, don't. Uh, because now if you go to copy these files to Windows, which isn't case sensitive, the second copy is going to overwrite the first one. So if everyone lived in Unix land, that would be great, and we could all do this. But in a world where you might have to be giving files to people that aren't running Linux, this is a really bad practice. Uh, so, yes, Linux is case sensitive. Yes, you can take advantage of it. But in general, unless you know your files are never going anywhere other than Linux, it's not a good idea to, to exploit this property. Yeah. Sorry, just a two part question. Uh, part one is can you have spaces in your file name? Like issues like this? Yeah, you can have space in your file name. You have to be careful to quote it when you, when you make the file. So, like, A, B, C. And when you call the file, you have to do that too? Uh, yeah, whenever, yeah, you need to, um, single quotes will uh, quote the argument, the command line argument. So if I wanted to like cat ABC or ABD, I would actually need to quote them. Um, and you just need to make sure you're always quoting them. Otherwise, because the way the command line works is it's tokenized by spaces. Uh, and so if you have a file name like AB and you don't quote it, it'll think you want something to do to do it. Yeah, exactly. and it but yeah, spaces are generally okay. Some people frown upon them. I use spaces for like media and stuff like that. You can have parentheses, all sorts of stuff that is not quite kosher, but it's, it's okay. Uh, the second part was uh, installing unsupported packages of say what you, your distribution doesn't support something that you want mm -hmm. to, to your way of doing it. We're gonna yeah. we're so, gonna talk about that more in uh, one of the later lectures. But yeah, I mean, push comes to shove, you can always build from source. So like, Ubuntu has their default repositories, which contain all the the um, packages. But also, people make their own Ubuntu repositories. Like, um, I don't know, M Player is a media player. They you know people from Ubuntu package up M Player, put it in their own repository. But I think M Player has their own, so that if you want it directly from them, you can get it there. Uh, if you only have source available and there's no package, you probably want to make a package because the package manager will keep track of all the files, so you can undo, you know, cleanly what you what you did in the first place. Okay. So, I think the concept of package question. Okay. Talk about package? Um, a package is all the files that make up um, a program. So, if you are, it not, may not even be a program. Just be files that you need to have. So at the, at the very minimum, a package is just a bunch of files, and then it's optionally uh, some scripts that run after the package is installed, because some things can't be represented as just copying the file onto your computer, like adding a user or updating a database. It's very, very roughly equivalent to like an installer on Windows, like the .exe installer that then installs the program. Uh, don't take that to don't take that uh, comparison too far, but it's kind of like that. They're actually all like glorified zip files, is what a package is. It'll be a zip file of everything that it comes with, and then some like specially named files that have the metadata, like the version, and stuff like that. Clear? 
Yeah. Okay.